So his story was that he was from Scotland. In hindsight, she says the red flag seemed so obvious. He had been mugged and robbed and shot even. But for this McKinney woman who asked us not to show her identity, she says her loneliness was blinding. So he didn't have any money, basically, and didn't have access to any money. So how much money did you end up sending him? I got up lucky with a total of $3,200. But it's not the financial loss that haunts her. It's the realization that the person she spent months chatting with on Instagram was nothing more than a scammer. And she, a college-educated professional woman, fell for it. Why don't you think you saw those red flags in the moment? Because I was, felt as though I was desperately alone. You think, you know, how could I be so stupid? Um, I, I, I tried to kill myself. Because I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't live knowing that I had participated in something like that. Last year, Texas residents alone reported more than 46,000 imposter scams to the Federal Trade Commission, making it the number one type of fraud reported. But despite this staggering number, federal investigators say this crime is largely underreported due to shame and embarrassment. I did not come from a rich family. On the other side of these scams are people like Chris Maxwell in Nigeria. It's a common thing here. People do it a lot. Using this picture he stole from an innocent person off the internet, along with a step-by-step -step scam guide, Maxwell said he would go to Facebook and dating websites pretending to be an American soldier. The former romance scammer targeted divorced and widowed women from the United States. Over the course of four years, he talked to more than 100 women online, with 10 ultimately sending him money. I made over $70,000. That's a lot of money. It's a old fortune. When you were committing these scams, did you ever feel guilty? I actually stopped scamming because I felt guilty that I scammed a woman. I scammed her over $30,000. She became sick. She became depressed. She was 61 years old. I have a mother. And just imagine someone is doing this to my own mom. These days, Maxwell works as a consultant for Social Catfish, a U.S. company dedicated to preventing online fraud. But while Maxwell says he no longer scams people, there's no shortage of those who still do. It's a substantial problem, and it's one that's rapidly accelerating. At the U.S. Justice Department, federal investigators say a new wave of romance scammers is using artificial intelligence to generate fake photos, fake audio, even fake videos known as deep fakes. All this makes it easier to pull off a romance scam and harder to spot one. It is chilling and it also makes it challenging for law enforcement to intervene. We have to stop it. How do we stop it? We stop it by reporting and acknowledging that it's occurring. People feel stupid. You feel like you've, you feel shame and guilt. Shame lives in the dark. But perhaps in the light, deception can be stopped.